Hello, welcome to the Lily Loves Crochet podcast. I'm not sure what episode, to be honest with you. 30 something, I think we're on. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of the Christmas special. So I'm filming in front of the Christmas tree. Um, Sandra from Cherry Heart always inspires me this time of year when she does her, her festive episode. So I thought I would join in um, in my living room. So um, I don't actually have anything finished to show you, um, well just a couple of things, but um, or a lot of crochet actually, but I do have a lot of things to talk about. So I thought I would get on and film um, just in case there's anything that um, you see that you might like to order for Christmas because I got sent quite a few crochet books to have a look at so I thought I would share those and I finished quite a few books um well I, I finished two but I've got one to talk about and then I've got two Christmassy um books there that I've really been enjoying so and I also thought I would update you on my mini skiing blanket um that I started um well it must have been at the beginning of the year so um I'm still working with that, but I thought now's a good time to share because I think I've nearly finished with the squares and there's also a yarn haul. <laughs> so um, um, I'll just get going. But um, as always, you can find me on my blog, lululoves.co.uk, over on Instagram. I'll put all the details below and I will also put show notes with links to everything I've mentioned. And I'll probably just link the books in the description bar as well just just for ease but everything mentioned will be over on the blog so um <laughs> I feel really out of practice I don't know why I've been doing vlogmas um so thank you so much if you've been watching and commenting um I really enjoy vlogmases I watch them a while after Christmas as well so that there are so many lovely ones to keep you going um it's a little bit hard this year, I think, because, um, you know, there's not so much to do, but the the, the ones I have been um, watching are so, just really help me get into that um, Christmassy spirit. So um, anyway, if you want to watch, there's um, a few episodes of that up. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know where to start. Um, I'll start with my big granny square blanket that I'm working on for a gift. This one is for my nephew. Um, there we go. So I've done all the coloured squares now. It's just a basic granny. I'm doing it in the same way I did my farmhouse um, granny blanket a long time ago now. But I'll link. I'll link that one. Um, and I'm just using colours um, that match his nursery that his um, mum sent over. So. I think it's just going, I mean, it's not really a blanket for sleeping over and uh, because it's made from um, chunky, chunky wet yarns. And then um, I hope to add a nice border around that. So anyway, I've just got to get on and join them really. Um, so I'm trying to do a bit of that every evening because I want that done for, I think that's going to have to be Christmas now. Um, so I've nearly finished that. Um, and then... Oh, the other little item I don't I can't I don't think I showed these in the last episode of the podcast were my um I've been making more of my little snowflake coasters. I hope the light's okay today because I'm I've had to shut the windows so that um I'm not out of whack. So anyway, there they are, tiny little snowflake coasters. I think you'll be able to see these better if I put some pictures up. So um, anyway, they've got lovely thread running through them. Um, and I did a video tutorial for those. So you can have a look at those um, and some better pictures, probably some clearer pictures. Um, 
on the blog, I'll link the post, but there's also a YouTube tutorial. So if you're new to crochet, um, it's a really, really simple one and you can whip up a batch of sparkly thread coasters, um, which I think are really sweet, like little Christmassy gift. Um, you know, if you've got to do Secret Santa or anything like that really quickly. Um, they look really sweet. So anyway, the tutorial's up on YouTube. The free written pattern is available on the blog and has been for, I think I first um, posted about these, 2017. So you, you may have already seen them, but I thought I'd mention them. And um, lastly, I will show you some of the squares for my mini project. And again, I'm not sure the light's not terribly good down here today. I'm, I'm getting some shadows. So I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see these. But I started off with the, um, I think that was hedgerow fiber, fibers, maybe? Have I got that wrong? Um, there was a set, that was the first set that I bought. I've worked those up. And then I've slowly, as the year's gone on, added all the little mini schemes that I've bought or been sent. Um, oh, some of these colours are just lovely. I don't think the camera's probably going to pick them up. They're all um, fingering weight and I'm using a three millimeter hook. And I'm just keeping on this um, Stitch Keeper. I was inspired by um, So Sweet Violet. I saw her keeping her granny squares on one, so I thought what a good idea that was. These are the ones I received, the Easter ones, from the lovely Claire over at Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns. I think they're going to really look lovely. And the idea is, um, they do stand out quite a bit. Actually, that green, I might, I might leave that green out. I'm not sure. I think they'll be fine once they're all uh, worked in because the idea is that I'm going to do a similar thing again. So I'm working with, I picked, um, I think it's Drops Nord, a cream colour to work in between. So it will be a patchwork. A bit like um, Sandra's from Cherry House, again, her Battenberg blanket, but um, the squares are bigger and they're granny squares as opposed to the um, the other type of square. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> anyway, a bit like that. So I wanted a really sort of um, patchwork effect and I thought that by adding the white, um, I'd be able to see the beauty of these um, lovely squares more and um, you know, save a bit of money because obviously the, the mini schemes can be quite expensive. So I felt that was one way I could get um, a nice blanket. And I think, I think I've got about 40 or maybe 50 of these worked up. I know that I'm missing some. For example, um, the set that Claire sent me, there's some purple ones missing and there's another colour I think I've got in a project bag. I obviously took out with me when we've been on a journey and um, I've not reattached them. So um, I know that there are some probably lurking around. And then, um, I think those are some of the newer ones. I can't remember where they were from, those ones. And then, um, but they are very pretty. And then I've started again working, um, I don't know if you remember in the last episode I shared the um, pumpkin, I think it was the pumpkin patch minis from, again, from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns. Um, I, I did show them, I think, um, and I've started, so now I'm, I'm nearly caught up with myself. So I've started working on that set. Um, they're lovely. And I've got um, another three little minis to get three of those. Um, and then, so, oh, excuse me. And then I just ordered, because I thought it would be really nice to add, um, since I've worked, you know, I've bought skeins sort of at various stages in the year. It feels like a really sort of a year long project. And I, I really love that. And I think, you know, that was what I had intended when I started the blanket. Um, anyway, I ordered from Dandelion and Dogwood, a set of their bottle brush, Christ Christmas tree, mini scheme kit. 
um, and these are lovely as well. I can't wait to add these in. So um, these are some more, well, there are some speckled ones there, but a few more of the more solid colors, but I love that palette. They're just absolutely beautiful. And I think, um, I just think it will mix up the colours a bit more because I, I do want it to be quite a colourful blanket and you can see that the schemes that I'm naturally attracted to are, are sort of more obviously the muted um, colours, um, the more sort of natural colours, but I do, I do want it to have a lot of variation. So I think those will pop in there nicely and when they're all mixed up with the white, I think that will make a really, really colourful blanket. Um, See if I can get you a bit closer. Yeah, really, really lovely colours. So that I um, just need to roll those ones up, finish working the um, pumpkin ones, um, locate some lost squares, and then I'm going to be able to start adding these to a blanket. So start joining them with the um, the cream yarn that I've picked. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm hoping that I will be able to work on that over the Christmas period. That's really all I want to be working on at the moment and start joining those. So I'm just going to try and finish my um, nephew's blanket and um, and then work on this. This will be it. So, and it really feels like a crochet holiday <laughs> because although I've got lots of things I should be doing, I decided just to take December to really focus on a project that would relax me and soothe me. And um, this is it. So, and it will be nice to get a blanket finished this year because um, I I haven't done one this year. I haven't finished one yet this year. The, um, the Bloom Throw was the last blanket I finished and that was for the book last year. So um, yes, this will be this will be this year's blanket. So I'm looking forward to finishing that. Um, so I've got oh I've got the bag here actually. So I've got all my minis in this little um, Cap Kidston drawstring bag. I love these little bags. So um, I've just got a few little tiny bits left. And what I might do is just join them all up to make one colourful um, or maybe use them for the border. Oh, these are the um, Mr and Mrs Rabbit ones I've got, got left to, um, to work in. So yeah, anyway, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then that's it for projects that I'm working on. Um, I have finished one other small thing I'll talk to you about in a minute because it is from one of the books that I was sent. Um, I'll show you a few other bits I've, I've done and um, I've bought. Sorry, my mat's all over the place. So um, if you watch, if you've been watching Vlogmas, you will have seen this already, but this is a new project bag. It's beautiful. It's all in the this lovely Liberty um, fabric. Um, I'll link the uh, Vlogmas that I show it off on because that was filmed in... Um, daylight and um, you can get a better view of it I think. So um, that's from Crafty Clegs. Um, and the other thing I've been really really enjoying is opening my Lana Boo Ooh. <laughs> my Lana Boo Christmas advent calendar. So um, I'll just show you a few things that have come out of there. So I've had this lovely stitch pouch, uh, Notions pouch. It's a um, 12 days um, advent calendar. So what I've been doing is opening it every other day. So um, I won't show you everything just in case um, you've got it as well. But there have been some lovely, lovely pieces in here. There's a lovely pin there. Can you see that? Um, and there was actually, I must put that, there's a tiny mini scheme there from, um, who's that from? Siobhan's Crafts, Unicorn Tears. Oh, is that not going to? There we go. Siobhan's Crafts, the Unicorn Tears. I'll pop that actually with those other ones and um, 
see how that works out. So, um, um, a lovely glittery keychain there. <laughs> It's so lovely. Everything's been really lovely. And there's lots of little extras in there from other small businesses. So it's really nice just to um, get a taste of other people's products as well as, for me, trying some of Lana B's, um products because I've never bought from her before. So I'm really, really enjoying opening that event. Um, I'm doing it, like I said, every other day. And although Lulu has got very excited about it, so <laughs> she's been helping me. <laughs> open my advent which is quite sweet um and that's it so um oh no that's not it I don't know why I keep saying that so I'll just show you quickly some of the new yarns that I've bought as well as the um the minis I placed an order on Love Crafts and I've been really good this year about ordering yarn I've ordered um some yarns for my mini blanket but other than that I've really not ordered a lot of yarn at all so I placed a an order with um of crafts just for some yarns and i have some projects in mind for these so anyway the first thing i ordered was some wool in the gang this is albacino merino and it's chestnut brown oh it's soft soft it's gorgeous okay look at that color it is so soft and I really wanted to have a go at my beret pattern in some different chunky yarn just to see how it's working up before I publish it. So that's the plan for um, that yarn. And I, I grabbed that colour and I also, with a whole bag of goodies here, I also, I'm glad that I can share them so I can start um, using them. And I also ordered the same yarn in Cameo Rose. That's lovely, isn't it? It is so soft. Oh, I can't wait to um to try to try that out. So I got those and then um I used to um filming like this. So set in my ways these days. Okay, what else have we got in here? I have got some of the new Serdar Haworth, Haworth? Mm, not sure about that, Tweed. I love Tweed yarn, so I thought I would give that a go. I'm focusing. There we go, we've got some shadow with these lights down here, so I'll take some photos, try and show that a bit clearer. It looks really nice. That's a DK weight yarn. Um, I think that would make some lovely gloves. Anyway, I got a few of their shades. Um, that white one is called um, Cotton Grass Cream. And then I've also ordered, the labels come off this one, um, Yorkshire Stone. Um, I'm not sure the colour's coming up quite true. It's um, kind of like a mauvey grey. There's that one. And then the other one was Hairwood Chestnut. Oh, I love that. So, um, and these are 50 gram balls. So um, I'm excited to have a go with those. Um, because it's Christmas and I love the bling, I ordered some more um, sparkle thread. This is by Yarn and Colours. It's called Glamour in Rosé. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is beautiful. Um, I love that. I always, around this time of year, grab a couple of the sparkle yarns because um, I use them in projects all year round and this time of year is the best time, I think, to, to grab them. So I've got that. And then the last two yarns are 
Kinko Chunkies and to be honest with you I can't remember why I ordered them <laughs> um, maybe I just wanted to try them I definitely love the colours I probably should have wrote down what I had wanted to do with them before I um because this order came a few weeks back now I must have had something on my mind but anyway it's chunky tweed I love tweed I'm um working with the chunky yarns at the moment so I thought I would give this a go and the king Cole yarns are always inexpensive um so yeah really happy with that yes sorry the last one was the king Cole chunky tweed 100 grams um so that pink color was canna and then i've ordered this one which is called jura that's sort of got some blue speckled uh, yarn there some blue um flex in it yeah Try those and I also ordered from um, Lovecrafts and I don't, don't usually order fabric but I obviously wanted to do a Christmassy project but I did order some fabric look at that lovely pattern you get me a bit of a um, shadow there for my camera it's really pretty and really festive as well sort of subtly festive though anyway um i ordered half a meter of that so um i'm not sure why but i do remember ordering it <laughs> anyway enough about my memory problems um so I was sent some books, so I'll just talk you through some of them. Um, I haven't had time to properly review them all yet. Um, and I do, when I review a crochet book, I do actually like to make sure I've tried out some of the projects and I haven't actually, like I said, had time to do that. But, um, so I will just talk you through my initial thoughts um, on the books and, um, you know maybe give you some last minute Christmas ideas but the first one is um, modern crochet patterns and designs for the minimalist maker this is the um, is it de Brosse de Brosse book I follow her on Instagram I absolutely love her work if you love neutral crochet um, very sort of modern with lots of texture and chunky yarns this is a perfect book I also think this book was would be really good for someone that's fairly new to crochet um, the patterns in it are you know like I said mostly use chunky yarns and they're fairly simple um, but they look incredible um, for example just the cover you know that's just a bobble stitch can we see that it's just a bobble stitch um, cushion. Once you get the hang of a bobble stitch, you're away. Um, I absolutely love this book. I think the instructions are really clear. Um, here we go again. Sorry about that. Um, shadow. Um, I think the patterns are lovely. Um, there's a wall hanging there. Anyway, one of the things I particularly like about this book was that there are, there are, um, once you've bought the book, inside is a password that allows you to access the video, video tutorial help. Um, now that to me was really useful because I thought I would just try one of the patterns and it was one of the ones that I had already seen and I thought I just really love the look. They look really clean, really simple and it is these, they're coasters. There they are. I think they will look really Lovely, here we go. Okay. 
Yeah, I think they were really lovely. I really wanted to have a go. They use a seven millimeter crochet hook um, and you need to um, buy the wooden rings. Um, but really lovely. There's the written pattern picture tutorials. I won't show you too much, but anyway, I was going to buy some of the yarn. It does tell you what yarn. It was the um, Bernat Maker Home. But um, I thought, well, you know, just for one coaster, that might be a bit excessive. Anyway, I used my paint box yarn, uh, the t-shirt, recycled t-shirt yarn. Now, um, my coaster has pulled up big, as you can see, <laughs> because of that, yarn is obviously bigger. But um, it would work just as well as a heat pad, I think. Anyway, I really love it. It's just that kind of um, slip stitch pattern, very basic, and um, it it works really well with this bigger yarn because um, I just think it's a lot easier, to be honest with you, to work those slip stitches in, into a bigger yarn. Now, when I came to um, popping on the ring, <laughs> I had a little mind freeze. Um, which is odd because I'd not long done a project where I'd crocheted into an elastic band, but my mind sort of went blank. And when I was doing it, it wasn't, it just wasn't looking tidy and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I went on to the link and um, yeah, the first clip that was, you know, relating to this pattern was attaching the ring. And again, just one look and I was like, oh, yes, I know what I'm doing wrong. So that for me was really useful and I think that would be really useful to anyone buying this book, especially if they're beginner. So I think that the video support for these, these projects is just such a good idea. I just, yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sad that I didn't think to do that with my book. <laughs> anyway, so that's a really, really lovely book. Um, I'll put the link below, but there are lots of, there's throws, hairbands, scarves, you know, um, pillowcases, hats, just really accessories. There's no garments. Um, there's lots of fun little um, Christmassy almost projects using these wooden rings. Um, I love that. I just love this whole aesthetic. I just think it's really, really pretty. So I definitely really rate that. So that's Patterns and Designs for the Minimist Maker uh, Modern Crochet by Teresa Carter. Um, and that one came out in February by the looks of it. So definitely, um, I just think it's a really, really nice book. It's a really nice looking book. Um, it feels nice. Um, and the way she's laid it all out would make me want to make everything in that book. So I'm really happy to have that. The other one I really love is Cute Crocheted Wild Animals. And this is by Emma Varnum. There we go. So if you're making a lot of um, amigurumi kind of patterns, this might be one for you. If you've got young people that you're making for, um, you might recognize Emma, Emma Varnum from, um, she does a lot of work, or she did, I'm not sure if she still does, for Inside Crochet. Um, and these lovely little creatures. Now, what I love about this book is you get the patterns for the animals. Here they are. And I'm so sorry about the glare from the light. I'll try and put some pictures up on the blog. Anyway, and then you get the patterns for their clothes <laughs> and their accessories, which you can, of course, switch up. So we've got lots of patterns for shoes. And then there's patterns for hats and bags. <laughs> so I just think that's gorgeous. There's, oh gosh, swimwear outfits. Um, nightwear, look at that little hat. I want one of those <laughs> for myself. Uh, dresses, trousers and shorts. Just, I just think tops and jackets. I just think what a lovely idea. So you can pick your animal. So we've got pandas, monkeys, um, zebras, what else? 
the elephants. I just think the elephants are absolutely adorable. Look at that one in bed. Oh gosh. Isn't that lovely? So if you know someone that loves making soft toys or someone that's got children that they like to make for or grandchildren, I think this is beautiful. I think it's such a lovely idea that you can switch up their outfits. You know, they can be whatever gender you like. Um, I, I really love that. Anyway, that one's by Emma Varnon. That's cru Cute Crocheted animal, Wild Animals. And that one was released back in March. So um, that's another lovely one. But I haven't, as yet, like I said, I haven't, can't testify to what the patterns are like, although I know that Emma's a really good designer. So I've no doubt that they're, they're lovely. Um, one of the newer releases that I've been sent is um, Crocheted Dogs. This is by Vanessa Muncy. Uh, this one came out in September. Okay. Brilliant. Um, and again, I haven't tried this. Um, and I'm not familiar with the designer either, but I <laughs> just think it's just a great idea. It, you've um, know someone that loves their, their dogs. Um, uh, so the pictures are lovely. And then look at the Dalmatian. Again, I haven't tried the pattern. Oh gosh. Um, oh, look at the Yorkshire Terrier. Let me see that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, now, these patterns do appear to be charted. Um, this book very much looks to me like a book for someone who already knows how to crochet. Um, because there are don't appear to be oh there are some um there's some finishing touching touches at the back so there are some instructions but they're not photo instructions for the stitches they're very much the sort of um drawn style and there are also um diagrams in this book but they also appear to be hand drawn um which I think gives it quite a nice vibe, but it, I can see that it may be a little confusing for some, especially if you're new to chart reading. So there's that, but all in all, I do think it's a lovely book. Um, but like I said, I, it's not something I probably would make from myself, just because I'm not a very big amigurumi maker anyway. Um, and I don't think it's got a pug in it. <laughs> it's got a French bulldog. Um, border terrier. Got the um, little dachshunds, dachshunds, daxies. So yeah, anyway, one to have a look at. And the last one is Crochet Cafe. And this one's by... Lauren Epsi. Um, this one came out in July. This is Recipes for Amigurumi Crochet Pans. Now, I really like this book again. I think it's a really lovely idea. Um, it's very clear. You've got lots of um, instructions in, you know, photographed instructions. Um, and just lots and lots of amigurumi pieces. So you've got uh, toast and egg. So you can make every lots of things for your cafe. Um, I think, you know, I think that's a lovely idea. If you love amigurumi, if you know someone that likes making lots of little things, um, I probably would have made more from this book when, um, when Lulu was playing with her, you know, um, play kitchens and things like that. But I think it's a lovely idea. I think the images are really clear and everything's laid out very nicely. Um, but again, I haven't tried it, but some of these patterns, it does look like there's a variety of patterns. You know, some look very easy. Um, some definitely require a little bit more focus. 
Um, but you've got oranges, popcorn, you've got bowls, chips, apple wedges, hot dog bottles and condiments, tomato soup and toast, pita breads, burritos, muffin and lattes. There's just so much. I just think it's a really, really fun book. Um, so anyway, that's um, Crochet Calf by Lauren Epstein. So that's another one that I think would make a really, really lovely gift. So yes, I've felt very, very lucky to receive those. Um, and I think that's it now for crochet books and crochet chat. So I will just talk you through some of the books that I've been enjoying. Um, the first one I finished was American Dirt by Janine Cummings. I absolutely loved this book. It is about a mother and her child who are on the run from the cartel in um, Mexico and they're trying to make the journey to America um, as immigrants and it's very harrowing you know it really opens your eyes to the dangers that these immigrants face and the reasons why they do it really because um, you know we often have those conversations you know why would they put themselves through it's so dangerous and this book really gives an insight into that um, you know a mother's love um, a family's just will to survive um, it was really really lovely I mean quite harrowing in some respects but um, yeah, I really enjoyed it and um, I'm really happy that I finally got around to reading it because I've had it since the summer. Um, yeah, it just, and it does feel like a real journey. I mean, they have to do everything by foot or um, train or, you know, there's no just getting on a plane or popping in a taxi. It's, yeah. It's, it's some, some aspects quite brutal and she's doing it all with a young child which you know I mean I just can't even imagine one of my children even at the ages that they are walking the distance to be honest with you so I really recommend that definitely and then I've just bought two Christmas books and if you've been watching the vlogmases you will have seen these already but I thought I'd mention it on here for those people that don't watch the um, vlogmas this is The Little Library Christmas by Kate Young. I'm absolutely loving this. Nothing's focusing today. Loving this book. I said on the podcast, I opened it to this page and was instantly sold. <laughs> Just looks like my house, basically. <laughs> Full of books. <laughs> anyway, this is a book that is a recipe book, but it reads also like a book um, in that you can pick it up and read a few chapters and all the Christmas recipes are inspired by her favourite Christmas stories and Christmas books. So um, we actually have already tried a few of the recipes in here. So um, Lula and I made the peppercorka. Um, she really enjoyed making that and they tasted really good. They have all gone. And then the other day, I made the biscotti. Now, the biscotti was one I wanted to make anyway. One, because I love biscotti. But two, because um, this is a nod to The Children of Greenow, which is one of my favourite films. Um, it was a, a TV series to watch at Christmas. And um, I love the books. So I tried this and I was so surprised at how easy it is to make biscotti. I can't even tell you how embarrassed I am to get to my age and not realise. But the recipe was gorgeous. Um, the biscotti was lovely. Um, and I made, it made so much um, that we're still enjoying them now. And I don't think I'll actually ever probably buy biscotti again, to be honest with you. So um, I made that one. I really recommend that as a Christmas gift for someone who loves baking, for someone who loves books. I, yeah, I think that was about £7.50 in Tesco's, so um, I definitely recommend that. I remember, I think last year, reading the Nigel Slater's, um, and it's got a similar sort of theme, really. 
And then the other book that I have only just started, but I've already read a couple of the short stories, um, is Last Christmas. This is Memories of Christmases Past and Hopes for Future Ones. Now these are um, stories or memories of Christmases curated by Emma Thompson and Greg Wise. Um, and some of the um, people contributing are people like Stephen Fry, Meryl Streep, but they've also got political refugees, um, people who've been homeless, sharing their experiences of Christmas and memorable Christmas to them. So it's a nice book because you can just pick it up and read, you know, a chapter um, or a story. And, you know, what there are, what's that? They're about 10 pages each, each story, some are even shorter. And I just think it's really lovely to, um, you know, learn about other people's Christmases and their traditions, but also to be aware of people that don't have such an easy time at Christmas. So, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. And it says 25p from this book will be paid to the Crisis and the Refugee Council, which I also think is really lovely. So um, I definitely recommend that one as well. Um, and that is everything I have to share with you today. So, um as far as TV goes, oh, I finished watching The Queen's Gambit, which I absolutely adored. So um, thank you to everyone that recommended that. Yeah, really, really loved that. Um, there's uh, season two of Virgin Rivers back on. I haven't got around to watching that, so I'm really looking forward to watching that over Christmas. Um, and other than that, I don't know. Oh, obviously, we watched The Crown. Um, I was um, very in love with Princess Diana when I'm... Um, when I was younger. <laughs> I thought she was the most beautiful thing in the world. <laughs> and um, it was kind of sad, actually, and kind of, um, you know, it brings all those feelings back, I suppose, that you had on, on that, the, you know, the sadness that people felt when their marriage broke down. Anyway, really enjoyed that. <laughs> so um, we did um, speed through The Crown and The Queen's Gambit and Actually, Rob really enjoyed The Queen's Gambit as well. I didn't think that he would um, sit through it, but he really enjoyed that. Um, I think that's everything, really. I haven't, don't think I've got anything else to talk to you about, but I am, like I said, doing Vlogmas, um, just a couple of videos a week. So, um, you know, pop over there if you want to see any random thoughts. <laughs> and uh, Christmassy chat. Um, other than that, I think this will be the last podcast now until probably the new year, definitely until after Christmas. So I hope you all have a wonderful festive season, whether you celebrate Christmas or not. I hope that you all manage to stay safe and um, get some time to relax and hopefully spend time with some of your family. Um, I know it's definitely going to be a hard one this year for a lot of people. So Anyway, um, take care and I will see you all again soon.